Hello, this is Jimmy here at O'Reilly's and we have a Ford S-Max TDCI here with a DPF fault. So we'll just get the OBD port there plugged in and we've got the vehicle started up. Engine malfunction sign on and the engine management lights on there. So we've just got the diagnostic hooked up, going to get it set up. And again, this vehicle has been to numerous garages. They're able to get the fault cleared, but it comes back within a couple of miles. Now everyone has their specialty. I'm not the best at some things, but DPFs are where my strong point is, so I'm sure I can get this figured out and fixed. And here's some of the details. It's a 2013 Galaxy 2 litre diesel, and it is automatic. That doesn't make no difference, but that's it. Okay, now we're in. We'll go to the power control module. See what codes we have. Probably looking at the P2463 and the P246C before I even look at it. Uh, they did tell me it was something like that. Some, some, something related to the DPF, but they weren't 100% sure. Now the problem is with some guards is that they're, they're doing DPF regenerations. Um, I've asked the customer questions, do you know what the DPF pressure was before and after the DPF regeneration? No, the guards didn't check for none of that. All they've done is they've just done, done a regeneration. Yeah, here you go, let's go. They don't check the, the pressures. Does it need a regeneration or not? Right, so we have particle filter restriction, soot accumulation. Vehicle condition is incorrect for the regeneration. Why is that? And it's going to be because of this one. Exhaust temperature is too low for the filter regeneration. Why is the exhaust filter too low? I think we all probably know by now that it's most likely caused by a broken or blocked DPF uh, vaporizer injector. So we're just going back. Special functions. Power control module. And we will go to the vaporizer prime. We'll do that. Yes. Now we'll get a little screen come up where it's pumping up the uh, pad fluid there. Sorry, not pad fluid. Vaporizer fluid. Um, we'll wait until that's done. What that's going to do is it's going to try and pump fuel into the DPF. Now, if the vaporizer is lightly blocked, this can unblock it. Right, now that that's complete, we're going to start the vehicle up. And we're going to give it a few revs. Get the exhaust heated up and see if we get some smoke coming out the back. Okay, we've been giving the vehicle some revs and this is just a little quick test that we do without removing the vaporizer. If the vaporizer is working, we should see smoke from the rear of the vehicle. We have no smoke, so the vaporizer is definitely not working. So let's come under the car and vaporizer right there. I am not looking forward to trying to get that off. It looks extremely rusty. So here's another test we can do. We are priming up the vaporizer now again. And we cannot hear the vaporizer fuel pump working. So what does that mean? It means either the pump's not working or the power supply to it is not working. We're just going to get this little cross brace off here. Now we have that off, we can just move it to the side by leaving one of the bolts attached. And here we have the fuel pump for the vaporizer. And just there we've got a little 13mm bolt that we're going to open just to get it off. So we've got the fuel line off here, no fuel coming out. And it is pumping. So now we'll test the plug. I can see there we got 12 volts coming to the plug. Okay, now we'll test the vaporizer to see if it's blocked. Got a MIDI vac here connected up to the hose line. Uh, let's just try and hold it with one hand. You can see there the pressure is building up. Now that pressure shouldn't move, shouldn't build up whatsoever. 
So what I've actually done there is I've put my probe tester directly onto the pump and it's working with my probe tester so um, all I can guess is it's just uh, not compatible on that computer there. It's not really compatible to make that work. Uh, so I can see that the vaporizer is definitely blocked so we're going to go with taking this off and getting a replacement vaporizer on it or see what we can do if we can clean it. So we just put some WD-40 on it, let it sit for a minute. Right, so what I'm using is a 22mm crow's foot spanner on an extension here. And then I'm using a socket for an extension on that. And we're levering it open, just like that. Right, so purely just because of the age of this thing and uh, the tread, sorry, it's a little bit out of focus tread is not in very good condition there so I'm just gonna go up and put a new one on it so I've got plenty of here in my drawer got a brand new one here that we can get fitted so when you connect it up to a new vaporizer and you give it a squeeze that's what it should look like absolutely no movement whatsoever just like that now it's all fitted back together we're just doing up the brace here again Right, so we're going to clear all of these codes and we'll see what does clear. So the particle filter one is still going to be there. Uh, after treatment injector circuit low, we need to make sure that that's plugged in properly then. And that's then we're going to go back to special functions. Um, let's have a look what we've got here. Reset the diesel pil particle filter learn values. Turn the ignition off. Well, that's done. Now we should be able to go back and clear the codes again. So clear. Okay, we need to go back under and check that plug, make sure it's plugged in properly. Okay, so we're back. We've just shoved the plug back in a little bit more tightly. Uh, the plugs can be quite tight. You need to push them in until they click. I should know that myself. But now that's done, uh, now we can go back to special functions. No, sorry. We Okay, we've cleared the codes. Um, yeah, now we're just uh, going to start the vehicle up. Let's go to the data stream. Let's see what other particle filter stuff we can get up here. Particle filter percentage is on two hundred percent. on about 3,000 RPM. It's difficult to get a steady rev on it. So we've got close to 200 pressure. Well, this one is it's questionable. It's on 10 millibars, which is round about okay, but max it's 10, I'd usually say, is the max. It is on max. Uh, on revs, it's going up around 180 uh, at 3000 RPM, so it's kind of debatable whether or not I should clean it. Um, maximum revs on, on revs, it should be 80, so on revs, it's too high, but on idle, it's, it's close. Uh, but yeah, we're here, we're putting a new vaporizer on it. Uh, it may work 
on the vaporizer. Um, it may clear with just fitting a new vaporizer, but um, this need to decide whether or not we want to clean it. So while we're here, just to make sure, we're just going to give it a clean anyway. And uh, we're going to use this Launch UK fluid here. Okay, we're connected up to the DPF there. And we're just going to spray the fluid in while the engine's running. Using the Launch DPF gun there. So just remove our pedal depressor there and let it idle. And we're going to spray some more fluid in. Using this gun here to launch the DPF gun. Now we'll see some smoke coming out of the, the back. Okay, so we'll just disconnect that pump and we can put back on the pressure hose. We'll just put that clamp back on there. So we're going to hold some revs on it for maybe 10 minutes or so. And we'll use the stick there to hold the revs and it should produce a lot of smoke like it does here. Now we can hear the vaporizer pump there working just faintly if you can hear it. And just inside the car, if we're inside from the floor, you can just hear a little pulsing. It's a little pulsing of the pump. It just goes pump, 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 pump. You can hear like a little pulsing noise coming from, you should, that's what you should be able to hear when the vaporizer is, is actually pumping. And what we've done to get this vaporizer working is we've just gone in through a different sort of menu. Um, we've gone off the offline settings. Uh, we haven't got a very good signal here, so when we're doing online settings, um, they don't tend to work unless you're in a good network area. But now we've got good flow coming from the vaporizer. We can hear it; it's pumping in nicely. So if we turn it off now. Now, if we start the car up again, we've already cleared the smoke from the cleaning, but uh, now we should see some some more smoke now that the vaporizer is is uh, working and we're getting. Um, fuel coming from the vaporizer pump so let's open the door give it a few revs you won't see a terrible lot of smoke just a tiny amount of you can see there that's how I know the vaporizer is working and you can smell the diesel aroma Probably what I should have shown you as well was um, beforehand. This 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 is why the, the problem occurs with these Fords is the DPF pressure doesn't rise up enough to burn off the particle soot, and that happens because the vaporizer is not working. The vaporizer is not injecting fuel in, and the fuel is what generates the heat. Now it's all complete. I'm just going to tell her to set a new DPF. If the pressure is low enough. Turn it off. And that's it done. Now if we go into the live data for the DPF soot loading, should have it on zero there. Okay, we are down and we are finished. Zero millibars there. That's HPA settings as well. And that's on idle. Now if we hold it up to... Let's try and get it on 3000. It's a, bit, a little bit tricky to get the revs right because it wants to sort of rev all over the place. Fifty there. Now what I do know with these Fords that once the fluid settles in and the engine cools down, that will drop even more than that. So we're just going in to check the codes there. No codes now. So that's it. And that's it, one Ford S-Max all sorted out there. See you on our next video.